Welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connector. With me this week, we have Tom. What's up, everybody? I'm actually here this week. Josh. Hello, I'm here. And Adam. I too am here. I don't believe you. I actually believe your consciousness is trapped in this Ah. video podcast, and you are not actually here. It's just a facsimile. But somebody's going to watch me play Soma. Actually, none (laughs) of us are here. It's it's just like last week. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Depending on... Sorry about that, everybody. (laughs) We're awesome at this. That is true. Yeah, so um, last week... um, we had some ailments, and it was going to be a Adam and I show. And we were pumped. We had this down, you know? Yeah, you guys got it. I can monologue like a son of a bitch. Damn right. And Adam was <laughs> going to take a good half-hour spiel. He was going to complain about, you know, the fact that, I don't know, something. But you guys were going to talk about, I was going to talk about Dota and Dark Souls and then complain about Nintendo. Yeah, so, you guys were going to have an entire Dark Souls podcast all mm-hmm. planned out, script The only two people that have notes. never played through a Dark Souls game yet. Yeah, it would, been, it would have been great. Yeah, it would have been good because <laughs> we wouldn't have talked our But anyway, um, so <laughs> shortly before podcast, I lost power. Mm. And power was out mm. for some time. And it was a really nice cold front, so it got really fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just got a fridge. So, you know, we went out, went grocery shopping, filled up the fridge. Power went out. Nice. Oh, that sucks. Fridge got up to about 50, so things were good. But it, it made me worry a little bit. It's like, oh, God yeah. damn it. I just went and bought all this shit. Be and careful then, with that milk and whatnot. Oh, we had one milk that was already partially opened. Yeah, that shit got poured. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't fuck around with milk. Now. I don't fuck around no. with milk now. <laughs> if it hits the date, I don't even smell it. I just dump it. Yeah, same. Yeah. 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 I really I like- kind of do that with I do that with eggs, too, even though they're probably OK. Oh, eggs. I do that with everything, to be, to be fair. I'm really, really date conscious on those things i'm like yeah i know i know that there's like you usually have a couple days leeway with that kind of stuff and i i know i know scientifically like you can you can drink that stuff and even if it doesn't taste bad like it it might be perfectly fine for you but i'm not gonna chance it it's no fucking way well it what ruined me is so i was at my mom's house during college i'm visiting for a weekend um i get some cornflakes i get the bowl I pour some milk on it. I'm just standing there in the kitchen by the sink talking to mom. I take a bite out of my cornflakes and like I had to push her out of the way of the sink and just spit it in the sink. It was soured milk, but it was all still liquid. It was one of the, and it was cornflakes. So there wasn't much flavor. It was just (laughs) soured milk and soured milk and bland grains. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's 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 awful. Yeah, but like eggs and smell- bread, I don't care, man. I'll keep it. I'll keep it for a while. Bread, bread, I'll throw out Still, until it gets Yeah, moldy. bread's fine. Yeah, yeah. Still, bread is get- preferable for making certain things like, uh, like French toast. Or- that's true. Today, today I made egg in a basket. Mm. Yeah, not that it's hard to right. do, but you know, I watched an episode with binging with Babish where it does egg in a basket from everything. Yeah. I was just like, holy yeah. shit, that sounds amazing! And oh my god, I was so stuffed. I made three pieces. So good. yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's like one of my wife's things. I I've been making that for a while. It's really really good. It's funny because we actually usually make it with like the Texas toast too. So yeah, uh, and you just butter the shit out of it. It's amazing. Oh yeah, but like, yeah, we call, it, we, call egg, half, we call it egg in a hole. If you're not a using little. half a stick of butter with with egg in a hole or, or egg in a basket, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, if you're not using half a stick of butter with just about anything, you're doing it wrong. Like butter. Yeah, yeah. Like when you eat your stick of butter, you, you yeah. Well, you got to butter. But if you're only eating, <laughs> you can't just eat a quarter stick at a time. You got to do that in halves. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we all know the this. system here. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I buy stick butter and then I got tub butter. Yeah, stick yeah, butter yeah. for cooking. I literally like cut it in half, slice, 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 throw the shit in the skillet. Done. Oh, I t- I typically just dip my what stick of butter tub into butter my tub of, tub of butter. Uh, my, <laughs> like, like, like a I, dipping sauce yeah, yeah my tub butter is like if i'm doing uh something i need to actually spread i'll use tub butter or honestly with scrambled eggs i don't want a whole lot of butter and it's a pain to cut the stick constantly just a little bit for that so i'll just take my fork that i'm gonna eat with anyway and just scoop out some butter and put it in with my eggs do you because, ever microwave your butter st- no sometimes the only thing that bothers me it's about amazing. tub butter is the fact that it's not butter 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't buy typically on my actual stick butter. I normally don't buy butter butter. Like what, un- really? unsalted Wait, what? butter. Yeah, yeah, just buy unsalted I, butter. I only buy that when I'm cooking something nice. Other than that, I just have like regular stick. Margarine? Like Land of Lakes I guess, and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Oh. Dude, dude, I think butter. I, I think I use it butter. so infrequently. I just buy the regular butter and then often. Well, because yeah. like I'll, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll buy the stick butter. And I even have, I almost like base. Like when I'm making a egg and a hole, for instance, like I melt the butter and then I I I kind of you know brush it, brush the butter onto the, and then I use that because it like it like soaks into the bread and you get this delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but my big thing with the um, whenever I skillet fry bread with butter, it's perfect in the middle. But sometimes I just don't pay enough attention. I'm focusing so much on the middle, I'll burn the shit out of the edges because the middle kind of like <laughs> collapses and the edges stay out. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. Okay. Yeah. So, so with eggy in a basket, unless you're making like little crispy, uh, buttery, you know, bread circles, you're doing it wrong. You have to make the buttery bread circles with the leftover holes that you cut out of the bread. Well, that's what you dip, start your dip with. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's perfect. It's like the perfect like little yolk dippers. It's, oh my God. <laughs> so that was one thing growing up we always did have was just like eggs sunny side up. Yeah. And then it would always be in like bacon grease and you just flip it over it to mm-hmm. cook it instead of actually flipping the egg or anything. Well, you can't take that chance. So I, I can never flip. figure out how to use bacon grease for... Use it, for, use it the same way you do butter. So take your stick of butter, but instead of buttering your stick of butter, grease your stick of butter. It's way better. Oh, okay. And yeah. with this kind of baking grease cooking, like you need a lot because what you're doing is you're actually taking the excess grease and flipping it over the egg. And then the heat of that hot ass grease is cooking the egg from the top. Yeah. So you need oh. to have enough to actually mm. flip the grease. Oh, okay. And then I've been doing it. Well, I never looked it up and I never really tried, but yeah, sounds good. Totally. It changes everything. It'll change your world. I avoid doing it since, you know, I've been out of the house because, dear God, I have enough heart complications that are coming my way as it is. No, dude, no. Do the manly thing. Eat a pound of bacon per week, at least. And then just, like, die at 35 like any real man. Okay. Like, take, take a bite of bacon, just <laughs> clutch your chest and fall over. Okay, That's sir? how a man I had, is okay, good. I had a, I had a it's good cholesterol. I had a conversation <laughs> with someone about... Um, he used to date this, uh, this foreign chick, and she used to eat uh, bacon like chewing gum raw. What? Wait, what? What? Yeah. What? No. And I'm like, excuse I'm like, me. <laughs> he's like, that's not cooked. Though. Yeah, but it's here. Hmm. No. I don't know. If that's the same no. thing. Uh, <laughs> no. My gal. Well. Yeah, I would say a big ten no on that. Uh, yeah. Mm. Like, there's one thing I'll eat raw, and that's only if it's been frozen already, and that's fish. That's it. Yeah. Fish? Wait, what? Yeah, typically like sushi. with sushi, you freeze the fish before they serve it. Oh. It's, yeah, uh, it's, I, I still don't trust that because it's it's a different grade of fish. It's not like a... Like, it's... I, I don't know. Yeah, like it's got to be good. I wouldn't, it's got to be good fish. Yeah, like, I wouldn't just go <laughs> grab it from the supermarket and trust you yeah that. you can't just buy like a bag of well, pre-packaged no, frozen the, the fish I, and just yeah, let it fall out and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the idea of it kind of freezing is freezing it's going to kill it but it still has to be sushi grade right? why because reasons all right because so instead of talking about the fish we went to uh i went to ram uh, with our good buddy Jesse a couple nights ago, and we got this cookie skillet, which was a big ass chocolate chip cookie in a skillet. But here's the thing: when they cooked it, they cooked it so the outside got like nice and crispy and set, but the inside was just hot chocolate chip cookie dough. And they put a big ass scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. So when you mm. you dug into this, you had like this molten cookie dough being cooled down by a river of melted vanilla ice cream. It was so goddamn good. It was the best <laughs> thing I've ever had in my life. That sounds great. Oh, That's- I love the whole like, especially like a brownie where the brownie's so gooey in the middle, yeah. and then you have ice cream. They have a brownie skillet. Yeah, that, that, we're gonna have to go. That's my jam right there. Mm. So good. But there is one thing I wanted to ask before we get off of this because we had the whole bacon discussion going on. Yeah, you're going to a uh, like a nice little diner thing for a breakfast sandwich. You get your typical, you know. a whatever English muffin or bagel, whatever you like, you get your egg, you get your cheese of sorts. What meat are you getting on your breakfast sandwich? Depends on my mood. 
Am I getting a bre- breakfast sandwich? It's bacon, but if it's just a like a breakfast, it's sausage. I don't like bacon on my breakfast sandwiches. I I'm agree. A, I'm, I'm a sausage guy. I'm a sausage guy on my sandwiches. I think like bacon is so pure and amazing. Why would I water it down with the stuff around the bacon? When I want a sandwich, I like biting <laughs> into something, and I feel the sausage adds a little more to the sandwich to bite into. I, I honestly, I think bacon uh, overpowers oh, I, everything else so much. Like even even bacon on yeah. a pizza. If you overdo it, you're yeah. just eating bacon at that point. I don't a like bacon, bit of bacon on the pizza. I do a little bit. I don't just, do bacon pizza much. Just but. A bit. Bacon pizza is great. If you do, if you do like, um, but you gotta like make it crispy and dice it up real fine. You sprinkle that across. Right. It's like bacon bits, but just a little bit bigger. But uh, and then you do something sharp like pineapple. I agree okay, with sausage on a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will do sausage uh, or ham on a breakfast sandwich. I, I don't like ham. I don't breakfast. like ham. Have you ever had rum? Yeah, I don't like I'm not I a big like ham it. guy in no. general, but definitely, especially not in breakfast. So uh, my old roommate and I had free Hardee's for breakfast sandwiches for a year. And <laughs> one of the sandwiches they had awesome. was the monster sandwich that was egg, cheese, sausage, bacon, and ham jesus free every day what? for a year like i don't care if that would kill you that's worth it dude and here's the bad <laughs> thing is they knew what they were doing because i would go there every morning and i would buy my hash browns and buy my coffee and i'm still spending like four bucks i mean i'm still getting a good deal but i'm spending four dollars every morning because i want to clog my fucking arteries with this amazing breakfast sandwich and do oh yeah yeah <laughs> like like you could people could put out a sign that would say hey look after you take a bite, you've got like three weeks to live max. I'd still eat it. It's like Meat Mountain from Arby's. <laughs> I want to eat that at some point. Right? Oh, my God. Do you, you guys what? know about Meat Mountain? No. Holy shit. It's a, hidden menu item. <laughs> it's a hidden item at Arby's. It right. is every meat oh they sell in a sandwich. It's like you have... But that doesn't look as intimidating as I thought it would. That sounds like it wouldn't taste... I mean... I mean, it tastes fine. It yeah, sounds like one of those ridiculous things that... Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't equal the sum of its parts. <laughs> <laughs> so here's... Okay, wait, wait. Quick, quick side note. Do you guys realize that Google Image Search doesn't allow you to save the images anymore? Yes. Is yeah. Yeah. By that? I know. <laughs> fucking stupid. It allows you to copy, though. What? It allows like, you to copy the image. Yeah, you can, you can right-click the image and oh, say... copy uh, image and then... Copy image address. And it's still the same thing. They just oh, got rid okay. of the button. Yeah. Because they just want it to be harder. Yeah, on but people. I like that button. Well, the that button was great. That button made them liable. It's a great button. The, no, no. That people was a top tier to button. Pull up the yeah. fucking pants, get their panties out of a twist, and you know, that was own like, this. That was I mean, like I get top, it. Yeah, I'm gonna like build a fucking Chrome extension. All time. I'm gonna build a fucking Chrome extension that that puts that fucking button back. Although somebody's <laughs> Do probably it. already done it. <laughs> it. It'll be the most downloaded. But it's not yeah. yours, so why don't you make one and I'll download that and I'll spread the word about Every that. five right. clicks throws up an ad. There you go. You're making money. No, dude. Do you no, have no. a that's, liar, dude, right. that's so old throws up a podcast. No, that's ad. so old school, man. No. The, the <laughs> extension actually runs a cryptocurrency miner in the background on your machine to constantly pump out cryptocurrency and sends it to me. Okay. I got to bring this up right now since you said this. Um, we didn't have a podcast since this, but in Russia... One of the guys that works on their supercomputer got arrested because he the supercomputer is offline, like it's not an online machine. He tried to connect it to the Internet so he can mine Bitcoin <laughs> on the Russian <laughs> supercomputer. Holy shit. And it probably it probably wouldn't have even been that good. Like general purpose processors aren't very good for mining. <laughs> Either need something like with a lot of GPUs or ASICs, like actual silicon built for mining this stuff. But yeah, that guy was a fucking retard. I, I don't I don't like breaking back into into weird chat things or cycling back, but RS that does not count. You what? just print, you just did a print screen, you idiot. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> you just you posted on Discord, you just did print screen into the same <laughs> It works. Uh, RS, well, yeah, RS understands there. how it's done. Yeah, I guess so. No, no, it's <laughs> no. it's uh instead of it's the view image button is the one they got rid of, not necessarily the save. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> I had to point that out. I was like, all right, let's, can we get on to games? I'm getting confused. Games. Oh, yeah. no. food, this is food, man. <laughs> I'll give you Oh, yeah, food. we're still talking about food. I put peanut butter into Wendy's Frosty today. Did you really? Oh, shit. That actually Ooh. sounds good. really good. Okay, did you, like, blend it in? Or did you just kind of scoop yeah, it and mix it, mix it, it with a spoon? <laughs> I mixed it in with a spoon. Okay. Oh. How was it? I, I gave it a spoon. It's absolutely solid. Yeah? Nice. I got the vanilla Frosty, though, not the chocolate one. 
I oh. prefer the vanilla. You see, I think it would Me be too. better in the chocolate, though, because chocolate and peanut butter can't be beaten. Your fry dippers? <sighs> what? Yeah. Oh, no, guys, fry dippers? I've done it. I've done it, but I don't really care that much about that. I am if I have it. But, yeah. Sweet. Fair so, enough. Um, That's coming. So, um, just going to let you guys know this. In eight months, since, well, at least Josh, in eight months since you're waiting, you're going to love the fuck out of Monster Hunter. This shit is crazy. Yeah. I finally got into the what I think the last boss is. 66 hours later, I'm to the Damn. final fight. Nice. That's kind of impressive, it? really. Is it like a big That's guy, good. a small guy? I don't really um, care. He's like 10 like feet tall. You're actually fighting, okay, so, okay. You're fighting Danny DeVito. This is if no it's not shadow, yeah, okay. boss, Danny final DeVito boss, dressed I'm as a interested. dinosaur. The thing is, is okay, like, I'm going to save this right up, like, straight up. Like, when you play Monster Hunter, I don't think that, like, the people or things that you fight is really the spoiler. It's, like, how to defeat them is really the spoiler. Like, mm -hmm. you could tell me that I'm fighting, you know, the T-Rex from, you know, Lost World, and it wouldn't spoil anything because, like, the whole concept of trying to beat them is its own thing. That's, like, you're going to spend hours against that guy anyway. So. Mm hmm what what is it is it but like a it's, giant it's thing or a huge. small thing it's not that huge uh there is a giant thing in the game but this one itself is probably only about the fifth biggest thing i think we fight okay so it's, like a, it's, one, it's, like it's a super bitch. over the top grandiose giant monster thing um he's been one hitting me that's like, good full yeah. health one hitting on a <laughs> actually relatively quick attack so it's really hard mm. for me because i've been using a really slow weapon Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of annoying. Really. So it's a whole lot of risk reward right now. So I'm trying to uh, gear up a little so it's not quite a one hit. Nice. You'll like it. You'll you'll like this game a lot, Tom. I don't know if you've played it or not, but I, if you like, I you know, you I... it, it, it's like it's it was again like I equate like really Dark Souls is like usually how I equate like the combat because yes, but I think the game's too grindy for Tom. Yeah, I I don't know if I would like to grind. Like I I gave up on Warframe. I gave up on Destiny. What else did I give up on? You just gotta play with homies. Like that's, that's really that's where it's at. Thinking. Yeah, and it's like it's fine. Like, and the grind's not that bad. It's it's really just like like how I always thought of it is you know you're trying to learn the mechanics. Like that's a, that's why I like is I like a game that I grind out getting actually better at the game. Like I don't mind. Like, yeah, I don't mind grinding to learn mechanics, learning how to play things. I don't like MMO grind where it's like, hey, collect five, get collect five long. more, collect yeah. five more. Did you get five yet? Five more, please. You know, and it's and I can't I can't stomach that. Um, but this is totally different. It's like, hey, get in there, try to beat this thing, try to beat it more effectively. Try to oh hey, why don't you try to take its tail out? You know, like oh well, I was just trying to avoid the tail the whole time. Now I have to actually actively remove the tail. Like, well, the reason it's a it's, it's a different kind of grind. But the reason I think it's a grind is because all of a sudden, hey, I need this armor set. This armor set has a bonus I really need. I need 10 fangs of an Ange. To get right. 10 fangs of an mm -hmm. Ange, you're going to have to fight an Ange 15 times if you're lucky. Yeah, and absolutely. That's, and that's using a hammer, great sword, or something to knock and focusing on the head. So, I mean, yeah, something that, like that would be, that, that's not really my thing. It is a grind. I enjoy the grind because yeah. I do like the combat. Like, I, I think I could play it, but only with people. Mm hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't like, I see I'm probably not going to get it at 60 bucks. I'm not going to get it when it comes out. But then again, if I wait till it goes on sale to buy it, all of you guys will be done playing it by the time I jump in. I might end up jumping back in on PC. I don't know. This yeah. is, this is really good. All right. That good. Wow. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm definitely going to play it when it comes out. If you're just going to wait until, you know, wait until a sale, then you're going to get, you know, I don't know. So <laughs> it's a, yeah. it probably won't get everybody. I mean, I'll still jump back in when I have it. The big thing to me is I love this game. It's not game of the year material. I okay. will say that right now. It's not. There's too much unpolishedness around it in some of the actual mechanics that matter. It's still a great game. It's still very enjoyable. I would 100% recommend it at full price. But I just don't think it's gaudy kind of material. Is there is there a different Monster Hunter game I could jump into right now to see if I would even like this style of game? Monster Hunter Try for the Wii. Fantastic. For the Wii? I would have to dig out my Wii in a box. <laughs> well, it's that or you go to the 3DS, which isn't that good of a version, I don't think. And okay. I don't like it in handheld. I know Josh did it on PSP. Yeah, I, that's where we that's, well, we played because we were in high school and we played at lunchtime and on the bus. So it's like mm -hmm. that's a different experience altogether. Now that I'm an right. adult, I'm not going to play it on 
stupid ass handheld when I can just connect over the internet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, like yeah. I loved Try on the Wii. So when Generation came out for the 3DS, I'm like, fuck yes. And actually, I have that if you want to borrow it. It's just hmm. I didn't get hooked on it. I didn't like the platform. It didn't feel as good to me as Try did. Try is a really good Monster Hunter. I'll give it a shot. No, I just I like wait it. and dive in. Just make your, this is probably, like, from what I'm seeing, this is the best version of Monster Hunter that's ever been so far. That's what, at least what I've been seeing. So I would just wait it's and then just dive in with us, you know? Like, why why uh, cheapen the deal, you know? And also, to go with that, this is the easiest Monster Hunter I've ever seen to get into. They, it's painful a little at first because they explain the stuff. But there's a lot to understand. So they actually are very good in this one about explaining to you some of the systems. Hmm. That in the other ones, it's just been kind of, hey, here's base camp. Go kill shit. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. This one, the, like, again, like, all of that stuff I felt like from Monster Hunter. Because Monster Hunter is gives zero fucks about the player. Like, yeah, hey, figure it out. Get good. You'll, yeah. you'll get it. Get good <laughs> if you don't, get, if you don't get it, If you don't get it, turn it off. Like, I don't know. I don't care. I'm just a developer. <laughs> you know, like that's kind of how monster feels it's like kill the dragon it's like well dragons are easy in games like not this game <laughs> dragon i wouldn't say dragons are dragon. easy in all games i did like, in most games dragons are pretty easy except for like boulder's gate i did like uh donkey's review which made me really interested in the game itself just mechanically mm. because he said yeah they'll give you an hour time limit for a battle which by the way that's not generous like you're gonna have to work really quickly yeah, exactly. That's Especially on the high-end bosses. I mean, eventually you get to the point, the first time you fight something, it might take you 30 minutes. Yeah. But then by the time you're finishing off some stuff you need for it, you can go back to it and kill it in 5, 10 minutes. Okay. Hmm. Still, 5, yeah. 10 minutes. But that's do, by do you your... realize, like, comparing that, that phrase to any other game, like, yeah, well, you know, it's like a level 1 wolf, and it'll only take you 5 to no, 10 no, no, minutes. You're looking kill. at it the wrong way. The monster <laughs> is the level, so it's saying you can fi- finish a level in 5 to 10 minutes. Yeah, it's, yeah you, you You have oh, to change okay. your perspective yeah. when you're coming at a monster hunter on that level. Okay. Right. A fight is the level. So, monster hunter but, world. Yeah. It's it's good. It's good stuff. I, I saw you guys you guys get uh, get a little bit tactical today. You you got back to uh, well, to well, some siege tactical. boys. I got a little yeah. uh, potato y too. But yeah. Oh. yeah. Wait, weren't you always <laughs> potato the potato clip. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there's a there's a potato clip. You need to you need to watch that. Yeah, That's in our good. Discord there's <laughs> definitely a potato clip. Nice. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll definitely watch it. But um yeah, so we Adam and I jumped into uh some siege. It it was yes, good times. It's been I a missed while. Siege. I, I keep thinking, like, I know I gave it a shot and then I returned it, but I keep thinking maybe I, I could try it again. I, I still don't know, though. So something I mean, it was just a free last weekend was a free weekend. So you kind of yeah, missed I a good opportunity. That. Right in a again, couple months, but... it'll probably be free again because this game isn't going away. They're doing yeah. pretty good monetization mm-hmm. work on it. I really I, honestly, I like what they're doing with it. I like that they're keeping this up. I like that they're not saying, oh yeah, this game is really good. Here's a sequel. It's just like, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're adding more people. Uh, you know, grind a little bit, buy some DLC. I, they're keeping it up. They're tuning it. it they, is- they actually give a shit about maintaining their game and their community. Ubisoft is doing great in those two big releases they had really close to The Division and Siege. They both started... Fair, actually, I like the I, Division I have start. not heard anything about The Division since it came out. Um, there was some issues, and then they just stuck with it. They hammered it out, and they kept going with it. I've been hearing yeah. decent stuff. That's nice. Yeah, but, yeah. lately I've been actually wanting to buy it, like, really bad. If you get so it, I, there's I, I a I probably dozen. will buy it. There's a few of us that have it. So if you get it, I'm more than willing to jump in and play some with you. Yeah, I think, uh, I think me and uh, Bubbles will probably get it and play it. We're kind of we're eyeing it a little bit pondering it maybe go into it but it's it was looking really good summit 1g was playing it a bunch it was super it looked really really fun yeah if you <laughs> like destiny style games but more realistic tactically games oh, it's see. it's that kind of loot based drop diablo style loot in a I'm just, i just want to yeah reviews wanna... on steam are mostly positive overall is still mixed because it's well, it's one of those things where over time they've been fixing the yeah game. that's 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 yeah. okay that's all right. Because at first, I think Siege had a lot of problems, and yeah. then they turned it around, and now it's one of the more unique and in-depth competitive multiplayer games that's out right now, I think. I think at least in-depth shooter. Yeah, 
I think it's definitely by the most far. Siege. Not even, not even close. Nothing else gets even close. I absolutely hate Siege, and I, I'm sorry. I love you, <laughs> I love you guys and everybody that plays it. I'm a big yeah. fan of all of you. I think you're wonderful, but I hate Siege. It's just too angly. It's, it's everybody. It's just like way too angly for me. Like the fact that I like. I'll be sitting in a room and I'll get taken out from a window, through a doorway, through a slit in the wall, through a bolt <laughs> hole in another wall, and I'll die. Like, I, kinda, like, I just don't want to have that level of learning in, in my game. Yeah, like, it's that's, why that I don't, that's why I don't play Dota. That's why I don't play those games. Uh, the, the other day when I was playing, though, I, saw, I happened to f- see this wall, and it was a wooden wall, and there was just like this little uh, hole somebody like busted in it to look through. And I just like, I didn't see the guy through it, but I just shot through the hole and ended up killing the guy. <laughs> oh shit! I was yes. livid. <laughs> see, I mean, finally, so I'm I'm looking at this review on on the division, and somebody said, "Hey, look, it's still a numbers game. Uh, you know, even if you're the best FPS player in the world, uh, you know, you're gonna have to grind out gear." Yeah, and yeah, mm. nah, nah well, it's not for me. See, you're not a grinder guy. Like the Destiny Diablo style games, I enjoy that loot grind. The um, the loot grind for Borderlands, I enjoy the shit out of that. I and that's I, the I only love those that's the only game I've. I, I love those games until I get to that point, right? Like I will go, mm. I will go through Diablo. I will go through, um, that one that starts with a T that's escaping me now. That was actually better than Diablo three when it came out. Fuck, I forget the name. Uh, it was an indie. Oh, game. Torchlight. Yeah, torchlight. Torch I will, as I smack my computer. Yeah, so you're destroying will, your laptop there. Yeah, I will. I will go through, you know, torchlight, and it is the best thing ever. And then I will get to the end of the game, and that's where I will stop playing. And I know that those games are designed to be played beyond the ending, so you grind out all of your gear and all of your weapons, and you you just slowly increment your character to be the best thing ever. And I'm just not. Into A lot that. of those games are made for the end game. Yeah, and I'm I'm just like even even in MMOs, that's not what I did. Like, when I max level in an MMO, you know, I roll a new character in a different zone as a different race. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It's not for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm, uh, I don't know. I can't, we played Torchlight. I just get burned out on games like that. Even like a, I don't I'm, know. I'm not a big Torchlight, Di- I'm not as big on Torchlight and Diablo as much anymore. I still, I mean, I can get into a Diablo. You put a Diablo in front of me, I, I can play it and enjoy it. But it's not the game I actively seek out. I still seek that loot, mm. loot just not Diablo anymore, mm-hmm. necessarily. Yeah, I get that. And like Borderlands, played through Borderlands, and then I stopped. See, I played through Borderlands, it. and then I started getting the ultimates, and then I started to like focus on making the invincible bug and that kind of stuff. I was mm-hmm. big on the end game content. Yeah. But, yeah, I just... I like that shit. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So that's pretty much been all I've done. And then Rocket League. But I haven't played around with any of the new shit on Rocket League, though. I'll tell you what we did play around with on Rocket League, though. What was that? Our 2v2 tournament. Oh, shit. That was fucking great. We had a fantastic turnout. Uh, we had some extremely high-level play. I played in multiple rounds. Uh, and we lost every single one because these people were fucking great. Actually, I take that back. We didn't lose a few, but that's because people didn't show up. <laughs> so, so there, I climbed. I climbed the ladders, guys. I did. I didn't come in completely last place in our tournament. Yeah, we had some. We had really good turnout. It went actually pretty well. Um, for our first go at it, we definitely learned some stuff. Yeah, definitely learned a lot of stuff. It was fun. I really liked it. These guys. Uh... Our eventual winners, the uh, Splay Black, did amazing. They were pretty dominant. They were the so thing. good. So oh, good. the last uh, feeling shots and everything. Yeah, we had higher level play than I was anticipating for. Like, mm. I knew he was going to get good players. I wasn't expecting to see multiple ceiling shots on stream. Yeah, you Holy know, shit. you know, even uh, even uh, Bivens got a ceiling shot. Yeah, in that tournament, yeah, I saw that. That was good. This is sick. It's awesome. No, it was awesome. Like we were, we were going to get higher level play. I mean, we have. I mean, I don't know if the people that watch this know um, the level of play that we get through our Discord, but there's a lot of really good players in the Discord, and a lot of really good friends that we have that are also mm-hmm. very good, <laughs> very good players. So we ended up getting about where I thought we would, get, and it was awesome. Yeah, I was just surprised about how well the whole thing came together. It was huge well, and- thanks to Magic Dave for 
facilitating a lot Indeed. of the, uh, the and, behind the scenes. Yeah. Don't, don't, can, I, can, can I commend so you humble. and Bird for yeah. doing that whole thing? You and Bird casted, casted the like the fucking entire. That's tournament. a lot of that's a lot of mental energy for an extended period of time. You yeah, kept the hype. Absolutely. You kept Good people interested. That. It was fantastic. It was great casting. You and Bird should be it, proud of yourselves. It was really hard. I didn't think like yeah. it's it's hard to sit there and like be interesting and like and still comprehend what's going on. And I'm not like mm -hmm. I don't think I did an excellent job, but it was like it was, it was definitely good. really fun. For and I, and we're definitely going to do another one, you guys. Like if anybody yeah, is had a good time in it or anybody missed it and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. I want to do the next one. We are absolutely going to do another one. This one especially, will probably end up with more people. Once that new uh, tournaments beta thing goes into the live game yeah did you, any of you guys play it i played yeah, a little bit the yeah, beta, i didn't did not you? yeah i downloaded it just to check it out really cool um it's, it's basically yeah, just yeah. right off the main menu you have your tournaments you can look into and you can use you know click tournaments and it's uh, my tournaments make tournament find a tournament whatever so and you can just go through the browser sign up for whatever ones you want it shows like the start time of the tournament uh, you can sort. They can sort by uh, minimum and maximum ranks, hmm. or oh. region. Uh, you can do tournaments with mutators or normal or drop that's shot right or hell. whatever you want. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. So they can other mm -hmm. third parties can leverage just saying, "Hey, we want a diamond or lower tourney," and then they can mm -hmm. use the internal tournament system to enforce yeah. this, which right. can that's be fantastic. abused with Smurfs and stuff. Yeah, but still, that's, that's still cool. really cool. I, but, I, um, Go ahead. I, I'd like to see how they handle streaming. It didn't seem yeah. like there was a lot of stuff functionality. There wasn't a lot of room for that. And uh, the reason being uh, what I'm about to get into. So the interface is really good. The interface is really good. So you go into the tournaments page and you can view all your tournaments or whatever. You can look at the brackets. And when the tournament starts and your match is ready, it just kind of like brings you into it immediately. So you can leave and go into free play, or um, I'm assuming once the game's live, you can queue online for matches or whatever. But when that match is ready, it pulls you in, and you play. And once you're done, if the bracket isn't ready for your next match yet, in the top right corner of the, of the screen would be an overlay showing uh, the game you're waiting on. It'll show mm -hmm. the two players in that game. And every 30 seconds, it'll update the time left in the game and what the current score is. Hmm. This is really cool. All in the top right corner of the screen. So that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually, I'm super, super surprised that out of all of the big esports games, right? Dota, League of Legends, uh, Overwatch, Rocket League. CS. That, CS. That Rocket League was the first to pull this off. Well, because well, Rocket League's the first to be more of a traditional sports platform. Are they? I, I, would say, I would say Overwatch. That already. Oh, yeah, yeah that is true. That's apparently, true. That's apparently true. StarCraft has it. But I mean, Rocket League like, short games, more of an yeah. actual sport feel. It does mm -hmm. feel like more like a sport. And I, I was talking to somebody about this uh, even even yesterday, watching the Overwatch League. I was like, yeah, you know, it's the Overwatch League is a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it does feel like an actual sporting event today. But my mom still has no idea what's happening in Overwatch when she watches yeah. a game. She knows that right. if this guy shoots a bunch of people and they all die, that that team must be winning. But that's the only thing she knows. When she's watching Rocket League, she knows exactly what's going on. Cars are playing mm -hmm. soccer. It's great. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> It's More or less. They, I mean, there was a, any idea. Even the players have no fucking idea what happens in a Dota match. Well, yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched the Rainbow Six Siege Invitational final the other day. I didn't watch all of it because it was like a seven-hour stream or something. But Jesus, even even play being somebody that plays Siege because I'm not like a high-level player, and when they're jumping the camera around, it's really hard to tell. Well, there there's something like, direct like. Out what the strategies right. they're doing are and everything. I mean, with Siege, they, they talked about it. There was, I forgot where it was. There's an article I pulled up at one point where they're talking, uh, talking about and comparing esports and why one works and one doesn't. One is the comparison between CSGO and Siege and why CSGO works and Siege doesn't. And a lot of that is because there's a lot of open sky in CSGO. Mm -hmm. It's a lot yeah. easier to track, um, to track a camera through a hallway because there's, you know, it's more of a, you know, an alleyway and you can look ab above right. and see what's happening with siege. Mm -hmm. Everything's first person, all the real 
action has happens yeah. first person where you're doing that little standoff where you're looking at people through a and, you know a pixel all, of a door frame you know yeah, most most of the maps i've seen in siege are buildings are you know yeah. building that is yeah. siege. Siege. All buildings. It, 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 the game buildings. the namesake yeah. is you're sieging it yeah. so it's all close yeah. quarters or feelish csgo mm -hmm. you know you look at italy or dust or even even in a close space like office and you're exactly right josh these places are big they're sprawling they're open and it's way easier to get an esports camera to maneuver around those areas siege not so much siege yeah. has siege one has, thing siege going has for a bird's eye view camera for the spectator mode for the tournaments right. which is I mean, it's it's useful to get a starting point, and they especially right. show this during the prep phase. Like, okay, let's look at an overview of the whole map. These guys are over here reinforcing these walls to block off this route, so their strategy is to hold this hallway and all this stuff or whatever. Right. And then once it gets into the action, though, I mean, they'll show that occasionally, but it's mostly first person. So you're having to really keep track of 10 players and where they're right and that's where and that's what they're doing it's kind of it's just way too much it's such a complex game it's just right. way too much to try to figure out on the fly with camera switching around and stuff right and it's similar to with like overwatch and those ones mm. like the reason exactly. csgo is so easy to watch and so hype because when someone dies it's one less person to pay attention to and each mm. time you're like hey, there's there's a clear bar right like oh they have four people. They have three people. Oh, they have two people. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Now there's only one versus four. How's he going to pull this off? Right? Yeah. Like, um, like those are. That's how. Uh, that's why that's like so easy. So much easier to follow. I feel like. I feel like Rocket League though has this like you know just so basic, so simple. Yeah, that it is. It's it is. so easy it's to soccer. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Without and, penalties, like, which are the confusing thing about soccer. Or out right. of bounds. Yeah. Right? It. it, it doesn't slow down like an actual soccer match. Put ball in goal. Yeah. If the ball goes in the goal, that team scores a point. If it goes in the other goal, the other team gets a point. <laughs> well, That's you know, the, uh, yeah. I mean, RLCS season five just started. So, so far, like RLCS as a whole has been amazing. But, uh, you know, season five just started. Hopefully this, I, I, I want them all to be on the West Coast, but this one's probably going to yeah. be in Europe. So we'll see where that goes. That's awesome. But, you guys uh, played today, didn't you? How'd you do? We did all right. We did uh, semifinals of the winners and quarterfinals of the losers. So that's where we ended that's up. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. if it, yeah. You get two tries at it, as Adam knows for sure, but other people might yeah. not know. So um, there's another week that we'll <laughs> that we'll check it out and see how it goes. And uh, our um, our Rocket League team is is doing well. They had a really tough bracket, so they'll have to. They're going to come back at it the next, this uh, this next week, and we'll see how they do there. Um, but uh, the last bit of uh, Rocket League news, and I'll, I'll be done with it, because I'm interested in what you guys have to say about it. The new um, Rocket League DLC was announced. Fuck and yes. And it's Rocket League DC Heroes. But it's m two new cars, a Batmobile and a Batmobile. So you oh, have, so we'll have three Batmobiles in the game. Well, right, yeah, an, Octane, an Octane hitbox and a Dominus hitbox. Give me that Earth. Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batmobile, baby. Give me that that's shit. Not, hey, um, no, that's not the Batman Forever Batmobile. Okay, Stop. sorry, sorry. Returns <laughs> in the first one. The 89 and like 93. I wanted the Batman Forever Batmobile because that's secretly my favorite Batman movie because it's so campy and funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, that is my favorite Batmobile. Is from Batman. But, yeah, no, so it's got the glow. I like, I had the toys of the kid. The and glow was cool. I would, forgot because yeah. oh, Robin that's got in it. The toys were awesome. Dude, it was so cool. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. I see this one, but no, it's that one is, that one's more Rocket League too. Oh, it's it just Dom, and I love that. Why why didn't they throw that in? I don't know. I find it weird that they're going with another Batmobile, but well, two at more. the same time, it was so it two was, more Batmobiles. Why not? Why not well, have the Spider G? I mean, if they have yeah, that, I'm sure they funny. have an agreement with the uh, DC. DC, but well, let's be honest. The first Batmobile they chose was the worst of the Batmobiles. Are you they sure? Should, no way. They should have no. done the Tumbler first. No, cool, no, no, the Tumbler is the worst Batmobile. Tumbler is the worst by far. Easily by if like yeah. miles. If they implement the wheels in a really cool way where that actually does the tumbling animation, that'd be fucking sweet. I don't know Either how they way, could do that. But. Yeah, I, hmm. yeah. Either way, it's still yeah. the worst Batmobile. I, I don't know. I absolutely. Yeah, I, like do. I think the newest <laughs> one is my favorite. I think it's low. It looks like a Batmobile. The Tumbler looks like a tank, which is cool. It looks like a cool tank. It but, fit in with the Nolan universe very well. 
Right, but it's not yeah. Batman to me. Yeah. Like it doesn't look scary. It doesn't look intimidating. It's just it doesn't look like a bat. It's a tank. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tank. It's a fucking tank. Of course it's scary. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess so. If you're like a guy on a street, it's scary. But like, <laughs> but like looking at it, like you know, just as it is, it just looks like a tank. It's not as scary as like even the the '90s Batmobile is scarier than. <laughs> <laughs> well, the know. '90s has that big ass missile in the middle, guys. I yeah. want, I want the yeah. 1960s Batmobile. I want like the dual cockpit <laughs> Batmobile. That's what nice. I'm really holding out for. There you go. Nah, nah. Yeah, like it almost looks like a speed racer car. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. That's what they need to do is get like speed racer shit. <laughs> but no, well, I guess I did play a little bit of something else too. Yeah, I just don't remember. What was it? Because we're talking about updates and stuff. Um, PUBG. Oh, really? Um, nice. Yeah, I played a little bit more of that. Um, yeah, that, that game's... They really did a good job at polishing that up. Uh, I, I really did you, did you see well. the changes to the new map? That they made it a little bit more dense, a little less... You know, I didn't get it, but I loved the old or the new map the way it was. I loved it. I, I thought it was really empty in parts. It, it almost felt artificially empty. I, I get it. I, I mean, think it, it almost felt the, like a desert? Yeah, it fit, it fit the aesthetic. <laughs> it really did. Um, but I don't I think, think they nailed it, yeah. I don't think it made for a very interesting gameplay for most of the match. Right. Um, and, and so I played, I played on the updated desert map, and it feels better. It really does. I didn't I mean, get I, the map. So. I, I, I played it. It felt like a desert, but I don't really care about a desert. I don't want to go to a desert. I don't live in a desert. I don't want to be anywhere near a desert. <laughs> I, <laughs> deserts are my worst. are my least favorite maps in video games for the most part. I usually take a water level over a desert level for the most part Look, don't you live um, in a desert isn't california just one desert southern california not <laughs> northern california i love the anxiety the green that desert. comes from running across the open spaces in that map though that's true. i hate that i, I hate love that, that especially in PUBG, because it's just like i know i'm gonna get shot <laughs> and, yeah. I, and i and i and, there, and there's and so some, much and it's just like i just spent 45 minutes gearing up and I just don't want to get shot. <laughs> That's a long match. I'm sure there's still plenty of that. I mean, just because they added some buildings, it's not going to... That is it's that the, game. The one thing there's, I, there's still going to be a ton of space for that to happen. Right. I hate the first order optimal strategy in PUBG. I hate the thing that gets me the furthest in PUBG, which is mm-hmm. I right. loot a place where no one is, and I sit in a corner right and i sit there for 20 minutes and that's what happened i played a match and for 25 minutes i sat in a corner prone on a bed and i waited for somebody to come into my house one person did and i killed them it was solo play and i proned on the bed and i I sat there i was number five and until the circle got outside of that house i didn't fucking move by not moving by not playing the game i got really really far and that's annoying that's an annoying gameplay there's two things though if you don't get if you don't get friendly circles it doesn't work for you and b you're not going to win that way you might get far you're not going to win that way yeah i know you're not going to get any good loot without killing players that already looted to get the first order optimal strategy it's the thing that's the easiest to do that gets me the furthest in the game and it's an annoying mechanic i do not like it and it's not it's not just PUBG that does that although it seems more apparent because PUBG is a slower game compared to fortnite um in fortnite you know i i I don't know it feels faster it's probably not very much faster than PUBG if you go ham but it's just a circle game thing. If another circle game ham. comes out, it's the same thing. It's always going to be the same thing. Just, you know, you hiding in a bush, you becoming a bush, doesn't matter. Wait, I mean, it's Bird, all gonna be the Bird same. has gotten, you know, multiple top 10 wins by his AFK strat, which is he drops yeah. somewhere, lands on top of a tree, and sits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but It's I mean, just a circle game good, thing. you got to have good circles. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, again, it's a circle and, game. Yeah. And, and are you guys... See... Are you playing Battlegrounds to... It, you know, are you playing Battlegrounds to maximize the number of times that you get as far as you can? Then no, yep. you're not going to have a very good time. It, you need to play the game to play the game, and if you, mm-hmm. however far you get is not really that important. I like fighting, so like dropping directly into a, a group of people yeah, and exactly. dying early, that's fine. Um, as long as I get some fights in. If I if I drop in and no one's there, I get angry because it's like, I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess I don't, I guess I won't see anyone for, you know, 30 minutes. It doesn't like matter a- what it is. I just need to drop and make like, just dropping in, fighting people, moving on. That's really all I've come to play those games. 
there was like a week where I'm like, I'm just, I just want to go ham. I want to drop and I want to have combat. And every time I would drop where I think people would be, no one. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I just wanted Pochinki. I dropped in the middle yeah. of goddamn Pochinki and it was empty. But was so 2017. So before we move on from this, I do want to ask, did you guys see the clip of the guy that made it to the end with nothing? He was naked. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. That was hilarious. This oh, guy, uh, there's one team left and they're trying, it was two guys. They're trying to find the last guy alive. They can't find him. And then the guy in calm, in game calm, tells him, hey, I'm over here. Just go ahead and kill me. And the dude is prone on the ground in just underwear, no gear. <laughs> made it to the third last person. That's really good. Didn't, didn't, just didn't somebody do a Twitch Plays Battlegrounds thing? Did they? I don't know. Could you really do that? You could. I think like, there was like there was Twitch Plays Pokemon like that. thing. Yeah. That would be That's, really hard maybe, though. Maybe it was right. Twitch Play. Or maybe it was something else. But I seem to remember it got surprisingly far at one point. Hmm. The Twitch community does really well when they do these kind of things. It's it's almost <laughs> like watching like the 4chan army all over again. It's like most of the time they're uncoordinated and fundamentally retarded. Uh, mm -hmm. and in very very few times, but it does happen, they will surprise you when you mobilize them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, uh other than other than Battlegrounds, uh I actually I played some Dota. I've been nice. meaning to get back. Did to you it. hate yourself, or did you enjoy so your time? I, I got excited. I was like, "Hey, look, spring cleaning <laughs> update, a bunch of bug fixes, some performance enhancements. Like, let's let's play Dota." Even though Dota, you know, it would run on toasters most of the time. Um, I don't know Dota two when they switched to the new engine three true. years ago. It did bump it up quite a bit. That's true. So Jesse and I played some Turbo, um, which I was thinking, "All right, no more forty-five minute matches." Uh, no more hour-long matches. This is going to be so fast. It'll be quick. It'll be great. Uh, and all of my matches were 35 minutes. Which is still good because that would have meant it would have been an hour-plus match normally. Yeah. And it, so I, there, was, there was somebody uh, who posted a tweet who later made it to Reddit. And I'm, I'm totally stealing this. I said, Dota is the only game where you can wake up wanting to play it, play around, and then never want to play it again. And it happens all the same the next day. And that is 100% accurate. The, all of the infighting in teams, and I don't know if this just happens to my teams, but everyone fucking hates each other. They all yell at each other. They all say, oh my god, everyone's fucking terrible. What are you children doing in this match? It's just goddamn awful. So I'm like, I'm trying to tell these people. I'm in text chat saying, guys, listen, it's it's a 5v5 game. We already have five enemies. We don't need to make more. Just just get along. Just, you know, It just takes together. one bad person to cause it. Oh my god, it's so fucking bad. I played probably three or four rounds of Dota, and I never want to play it again. So, do you want to play some Dota tomorrow? Probably not. <laughs> okay. I'm either going to Siege or I'm going to yeah. Monster Hunter. I just... I I think you should Siege, because oh, I think I want to Siege. After I Dota. pass Pro, though. Gotta pass Pro. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Dota, man. Actually, I want to play some more Soma tomorrow. How has that been going? It's been going great. I love that game a lot, and it's cool to be playing it again, finally. Finally it's getting a, back to it. Yeah. And it's, and I mean, it's a story game, so I know what happens at the end and all that, but, you know, when you play something, uh, I don't even know when it released, what, like 2015 or something? Sure. Yeah, but that sounds about yeah, right. When you haven't played a game in a few years, and you loved the game, and then you go back to play it a second time. It's like, oh, cool. You're just you know, remembering all these moments that you forgot about before and playing through it again and experiencing it again. Uh, um, did you it's kind of cool also experiencing it from the beginning, knowing, knowing the ending and stuff like that. Is it a game where you actually notice things, or was it not that deep when it comes to that? Um, I don't want to say it's not that deep, because it is kind of a deep story. There's a lot of notes and computer terminals to read and audio logs and all that uh overdone i guess stuff but <laughs> i guess the game not itself the right and world. It's, yeah but like circular i guess maybe where things you do early end up being impacted at the end and not in a choose your own destiny but there's things that they hint at the beginning that are big at the end kind of stuff Arrested uh, development style. Yeah, there's yeah. there's more. I'm noticing more moments where it plays with the idea of identity and how that uh, copying your consciousness or whatever, uh, the, all the implications of that, and especially going on through the game. There's there's these moments each time where you have these decisions you can make that 
don't impact the the story of the game or what the results of the game are, but certainly impact how you think about these things and how you feel about those decisions. So I'm um, knowing knowing kind of where the game goes since I've already played it is making those more apparent to me. All right. Um, I guess I should explain the game a little bit. I think I've talked about this game before. Basically, it's a survival horror game um, set in kind of the future in this underwater research facility. And it's made by the people who made Amnesia, but it's way better than than Amnesia. Um, Amnesia was kind of... Amnesia was a really important game for survival horror. It kind of helped popularize popularize the whole you can't fight back so you have to hide from the enemies kind of thing looking back amnesia almost feels like a tech demo yeah like you, yeah sort of the like way the, the, the story wasn't awesome or anything like it was it had just enough story to have a set piece basically for you to go through and do what you do and experience the things you experience but this game is definitely more all right we have a story to tell and this is all built around that. It's just a really, really good game. But yeah, the playthrough is going great, and I'm looking forward to to continuing on with that. And I'm playing on safe mode. Have I, I described about- safe mode on the podcast before? Yes, I and I was did. actually going to ask I think we if did. you were trying that. Yes. Yeah. That that was really one of the one of the main reasons that I wanted to play it again in the first place was because of that safe mode update. So I wanted to see. You know what they did with all the monster encounters and how how they made that work within the thing. And I have to say, it it takes away some of the tension of the game. Obviously, there's no fail state. I was going to ask if it really made an impact because to me, those games, yeah. the I have to survive aspect gives mm-hmm. you the anxiety that really helps yep. build the game. Yes. Yeah. Didn't so, so the 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 monster design, the implications of the story, the uh, the atmosphere, the sound, the visuals. It is very creepy, even in safe mode. It's very very creepy. Hmm. But I think I think there are like three types of horror, three three things that that make games scary. Uh, one of them is, uh, I would say, just creepiness. You know, your horror horrible looking monsters and the atmosphere, the sound, everything being dark, you know, blood or whatever and creepiness, you know, that's the atmosphere. That's the, it's not necessarily jump scares, but it's just uncomfortable to be in. And then there's tension, which is, I think a lot of the encounters, the, I can't let this thing see me or I'm being chased or, uh, and games can have no creepiness, but have a lot of that tension yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever played a game called Clock Tower? No, I've, I've heard, read of, I've heard of it. Clock Terror. No. It's a, it's like in a similar vein, but it's, it's a lot older. I think uh, 90s, early 90s. That. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know the date. It's but on the PS2, right? It's like a two. It's like a 2D side scroller kind of game, point and click adventure, and it has a similar like you know you can't fight back kind of mentality. It it, it, it reminds me. The art style kind of reminds me of. It's just an, so it's really just reminds me of all the games in that time period. So it's really yeah. hard to, to uh, like you know put it in there. But it's a uh, it's it has that same vibe, and that's and every time like I think of it, I always think back on like Clock Tower. But I wonder if the, you know did they ever make a game like Clock Tower again in 3D? I, for some reason, I remember someone talking about a you know a game where you would you were like a little girl and you'd be doing stuff a lot like Clock. Tower. I think they did. Um, I don't I'm not familiar enough with Clock Tower to actually know yeah. if the game was made in the same vein. Okay. Well, anyway, I know that. I mean, like Alien Isolation was also, I know, in the same kind of hide, accomplish your mission, don't encounter. Right. So, oh so yeah. Speaking of of terrifying games, um, Gog gave me gave me King of Fighters 2002 for free. Which was nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, the the scariest part about it, though, is that I don't think I've ever seen a port this bad. Um, well, it's a 2002 game, right? Uh, it's a 2002 arcade game ported to the PC by a company that apparently doesn't give a shit about usability. So uh, it is a shitty, super shitty, like the shittiest uh, uh, MAME 
version you have ever used. It is that. Um, the tech is completely broken. So on certain systems, uh, the game will actually run at like 400% speed because it's locked to like a frame counter. So you can't even play the game. Uh, the controls are completely opaque. All the menus are fucked up. You can't reliably get two players uh, into the game. Like it's the whole thing is just trash. When, Absolute trash. When was the port made? Um, I think. In uh, short, was it recent or is this actually like shortly thereafter it came out? No, no, no. no. This is like the past four years. Okay. Recent. I was six. If it was back in that era, no, I could see people not caring because let's be honest back to or a decade and a half ago pc gaming was a lot less than it is now yeah that's true and <clears throat> excuse me um it, it's not that uh you know that it was you know older it's definitely a, a more recent port but holy shit is it bad so if you're looking for fighting games stay away from all the old king of fighters ports because apparently they are dog shit yeah you want a fighting game go nether realms uh, or tekken yeah yeah, I, I feel like um, like fighting games haven't really breached the PC market like they have in, on consoles. Um, there's some starting to get there. Like um, the Nether Realms is starting to get around. Uh, Tekken finally launched on console and PC. It's mm-hmm. got some. Um, but games like Dragon Ball, uh, yeah, Dragon, Ball Dragon Ball Z Ball Fighters, was huge. Um, that game has been getting mass love and it is going to catch anywhere it's at. Yeah, it looks like a really cool game, and I'm not a fighting game guy, but it looks awesome. It does look good. I I'm not a I'm not a Dragon Ball guy. I'm not a fighting game guy. I'm a Dragon Ball guy, and I used to be a fighting game guy. So at some point, if I get that cheap, I will probably try it. But yeah. I still have Tekken Seven on the top of my got to get a hold of list. I love Tekken. It's the only fighting game I can actually feel you know accomplished at if I'm not fighting a human. Um, are you ready? And you just spam the shit? It doesn't matter who you are in Tekken. You can just, like, mash the controller against your face. You will beat half of the, the campaign mode. That's all I'm... That's, you're that's playing, my bar. You're playing a way too easy of a difficulty, Yeah, that's, that's my bar right there. Because you can get s- some really super deep co- uh, combos in Tekken. It is very yeah. combo technical oriented. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. I'm, I'm not... Does he want to is the question. Yeah, yes, I don't, yes, I, don't yes, really I, think, I think that answer is nah. <laughs> and that's why I'm like, Eddie is like the breakdancing dude that people just spam like square and X yep. and then they just do a hundred move combo on the computer. Yeah, it's so much fun. Um, so I was sick. I decided to play The Witcher 3, but I didn't want to like sit at a, at a mouse and keyboard. I wanted to lay back on the couch, kick the recliner up, and just chill. So I hooked my 360 controller to my TV, um, and I what played... What port? Huh? What port? Well, USB. To your TV? Oh, to the PC next to my TV. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're just using your PC on your... Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I should have made that more clear. I'm playing The Witcher 3 on PC and wired my 360 controller to it with the USB extension cable. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, nice. so I could kick back, chill, and play The Witcher 3. And I gotta say... It's a great nice. game to play when you're sick. Uh, and the, the controller works really, really well. Things are a little bit slower, like actually navigating through menus and stuff, but it doesn't feel bad. Uh, some things actually feel a little better on controller than they do mouse and keyboard, uh, mostly because you have less options on the controller, so there's uh, less to fiddle around with. It's more streamlined. I find that games like that, I think, tend to control better with controller. I would agree. Like, I, I really would. Like uh, in, in The Witcher 3, there's actually a button to control whether you walk or run, and it's a toggle on the controller. It's just the analog stick, so nobody cares. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like hack and slashes on, like, third person in general. I like on controller yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's why I play most of GTA uh, with controller. Like, yeah. all of it. <laughs> Except like- for when I have to shoot. Elder Scrolls, I like Elder Scrolls with controller. Games like Shadows of Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War, um, mm-hmm. Near, yeah, that kind third, of stuff. I love, I love the controller. Third person games, most of the time, even for even controller. some first, yeah, definitely third person games. Even some first person games, I'll play with the controller once in a while if it's not really? something that's shooter based. Yeah, because, I mean, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, you you can get those like slow pan view looking around stuff with the analog sticks really nicely yeah i mean i was playing i've been playing something um 
that has a lot of good slow pan uh, mm-hmm. sort of environments. And that's uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Mm-hmm. And I just finished it, and it was really good. Nice. You were playing really, that a couple weeks ago, yeah, right? You're pl- yeah, we started it, and we and I, I kind of was uh, semi-brief on it. I know we talked about it and who likes it and who doesn't like it, but... Um, as far as the uh, the story was concerned, um, I wasn't super hyped on the story to begin with. Like I thought that was all right. Uh, I felt like there was a particular character that was a little dry, but overall, it like it all you know the character really light livened up throughout the process. Like you know she felt stiff because she was uncomfortable, and then it kind of you know she grew. Like as their bond grew, like she became more open, and it, she became more of a lively character. It it got really, really good. And then by the end of it, you know, they brought in an old character. Um, the only thing I, I would say for, for Uncharted, for sure, especially this one, is it doesn't stand alone, like the story itself. Mm. Um, oh. So it really you, relies on previous games. It only does because the, the amount of impact the interactions have is heightened by you playing the previous games. Like you could play it gotcha. and have a good time and you can understand the story and they'd give you enough information to understand the story. But mm-hmm. since we've played them all from first one to the current one, um, you know, you really, you would really miss out on a lot. I think four and this one uh, mm-hmm. really don't stand alone very well. I feel like, like so kind of like the metal gear solid series, right? You can yeah, pretty much play any of those standalone but you're going to miss a lot of references and characters. Right. Psycho Mantis. it's nice fan exactly. service i like when games do that where you can still play it alone but Who's that ninja yeah if you play the entire series you get more yeah i enjoy right. it and that's, that's, you get some of that fan service and right and exactly and this one has that and that's what it was for sure like it has a lot of that and i feel like lost legacy especially is super super drenched in that especially because like you know, you have so much of, of each character is so involved in random spurts throughout the series, throughout the franchise. And then, like, a character that gets introduced was introduced in the previous one. And, like, and even to say that, like, you can't play four without having, play, having played one, two, and three because it, it, it really doesn't uh, have the same impact. So you really need to play... One, two, uh, one, two, or three before moving on to four and Lost Legacy. I would say if you want to get the full experience. But having done that, it was really good. There's a shooting scene at the very end that was awful and so <laughs> frustrating because it handles like GTA. Oh, uh, <laughs> but it's it's still really good. Like it's still really fun. If you go and you play as a stealth game, it's really, really, really fun. Mm. Um, but you know, it would be cool if it was on PC. Much easier, I think. Overall, the thinking yeah. game would be a lot better on PC. I think but... most games would be great if they were all just on PC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah someday we we all can. A boy we can dream. A protest. A boy can dream. But... Just Sony, the console exclusives. And, uh... Sony would roll over in its grave. Microsoft's all for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Sony would not be. Yeah, yeah Sony is the industry. Adam, Nintendo you tried. Uh, you tried to play a story-driven game as well, didn't you? I tried, tried to. to play an old. Uh, I don't want to say an old favorite because I played the first one more than I played the second one. But I tried to play Max Payne Two. I actually bought Max Payne Two recently, and I Max didn't do Payne my research. Two is the best of the series. See, I did a lot of research on that, and I was like, "All right, I know either one or two, and I already had one on Steam, but it stopped working on me. I couldn't play anymore, and Aww. I didn't. I didn't research the fixes as much as I should." Um, I did install a patch a long time ago to make it work widescreen, mm. but and then I kept reading Max Payne 2 was, you know, better in a lot of ways than the first one, and I never really did play much of it when I was a kid when it came out, so I thought, okay, cool, and it was on sale for three bucks, and I'm like, oh, nice. yes, yeah. no, easy, no brainer, and now I can't get it to work. Oh, that's... Apparently, it, it doesn't like Windows 10, it doesn't like AMD graphics cards. It's too old. He doesn't like Intel processors. <laughs> I I tried to do the same thing with um, like <laughs> tried to do the same thing with Blood Dragon because I was like, oh, this is something I totally missed. I'd love to get I'd love to get into that, and it would like crash on startup. Yeah, and I tried for like an hour. 
different um, fixes to try to get it to work and then i was just like you know what i don't even care anymore that's some nice. of them were reinstall the game directory without spaces in the directory and then edit the file to not have spaces and whatever and then oh my god was like run windows 98 compatibility mode and then none of that worked and I, one of them I is hope. like force it to that. run on your integrated graphics on your motherboard <laughs> instead of your graphics card jesus christ like, i can i can try I to know. help you fix it because it really it is a good game I, I yeah, really like I would like to too. do that. I just at at that moment I lost my patience and I was like, I don't. We'll really just we'll just run anymore. it through a VM that you run on your machine. You, you laugh, <laughs> but actually running it through Wine on Windows is actually a uh, really stable way to run it. If you need it in an older oh, version okay. of Windows, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, though you know what? <laughs> as much work as you're going through, you could probably pick it up physically, pretty yeah, fucking just cheap. Pop yeah. it in, and you know what's really nice? It works. <laughs> yeah, that's well, it. Sometimes, as long as, 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 long as your console works. Oh, oh console. No, you don't play Max yeah. Payne on a console. It was never even made. Like, I can't remember. Does, play, does the PlayStation Three play PlayStation Two games? Some of them. No. The old sixty yeah, does. The yeah. old sixty. The fats. I don't. Oh, I have one of those. I don't know. I think there were multiple versions of that one. But you had to download the utility after a certain point. Like you yeah. couldn't just do it. You had to download the utility, and they discontinued mm. that utility. God damn it! Yeah, there are other places where you can sideload it if you want to hack your PS3. Which is also kind of weird because it's like, hey, yeah, we totally have the ability to back be backwards compatible. Oh, we remove that ability. Yeah, it's, it's going to take that it's support. It's a support it's just, cost. This is ours now. So if I they know. had, if they had people playing like BMX XXX, like the three people who wanted to, and for some <laughs> reason there was a game crashing bug in that, they would not only have to take support calls on that game not working from those three people, they would also probably have to issue a patch um, or make the business justification to not do that and then, uh, you know, initiate a PR wave to make sure that, you know, people aren't going to get, you know, blast them for games not working on the system that, you know, should work. So I want to throw there's, this out There's here. a lot of ancillary things around yeah. backwards compatibility that have to happen. Microsoft has been getting their ass kicked this generation. They have. Yeah. But one thing they are nailing is their backwards compatibility with the Xbox One. They've been adding mm-hmm. so many titles to it. They've been doing their streaming, or not their streaming service, their games program. For $5 a month, you get any game you want out of this library. They've been adding Xbox OG 360 one titles. That's nice. So you there's a actually... question for you though. What's, what's that? Uh, what's with Sea of Thieves? Like, why is Sea of Thieves on some random Windows 10 only marketplace and you can't play on Windows 7? What's that all about? It's still beta right now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it, they don't have yeah. any plans to release it on Steam. From Microsoft what I gave them a read. shit pot full of money. Oh, really? Yeah, My, yeah. Microsoft, what it is. Microsoft on their exclusives, they're not going to hit Steam. They're going to be on the Windows Store and Xbox with crossplay. Is oh, how that's they great. I'll that. never buy this. Yeah, that's kind of what we were thinking. We were sitting there, and uh, we had a we had a friend text us. She was she's playing on Xbox, and she's like, "You guys going to play Sea of Thieves?" We're like, "Yeah, it sounds great." And we looked it up. We're like, "Oh, it's on Windows Marketplace only." So the answer is no, maybe. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to fucking buy that. But why not? It looks cool, just, though. It I looks fun. I watched much. Dark Soul Invader play some it, of it. It To me, I mean, it's, it's the same amount of clicks, and I still get the game, and I still get to enjoy it. Just I'm not going to punish loaders. myself. Yeah. So many I, launchers. Yeah, I don't yeah there's that, so many that, launchers. No, there's no launcher. I've there's no launcher. Are, I've launcher. got four fucking stores. I've got four fucking launchers. There's no launcher for this. That's what you guys don't understand. I have this with Gears of War. It's literally an EXE, Two. and you run it. You're done. Does it That's have it. like games for Windows Live over the top, like for, like Fallout Three? Do you no, I, that? I didn't deal with any, I didn't deal with <laughs> any of that with that with uh, Gears of War. Gears of War was literally you click it, you play it. That's it. Well, Whitney has okay. Windows Seven, and you can't, and she can't play it at all. Now that she might be fucked. Yeah, that, well, that, she's that, kind that, of I'm, just, I'm just not going to bother with it. Yeah, I I have no issue with them. Uh, if there's okay. a game I want to play, I'm not going to penalize myself. I have you play just for Rainbow Six Siege, but it's such a good game that it's worth it. That's and you hardly so. have to deal with Uplay. Yeah, I don't have to do anything with Uplay. I just launch the game through Steam, and it pulls up everything I need. I'm I fine Uplay with Overlay. If I, need to, if I need to Uplay anything, I just shift F2, and there's the Overlay. That's fine, I guess, but it's like just kind of like this weird appendix that I don't really need. It's like mm-hmm. a, I don't even know what they're doing with it's it. Like, like Windows, why? yeah, right? This weird appendix <laughs> that you don't actually need, except for to play <laughs> games. Yeah, 
it's really the only reason I have it. Um, <laughs> so I, spe- speaking of weird appendixes that nobody needs, uh, <laughs> capture the flag, which is not at all that because capture the flag fucking rules. <laughs> What the segment did you just try to right. do? I just transitioned. That's, <laughs> that was a, a pro, <laughs> pro <laughs> segue. All right, I see. That was, like that was as much of a segue as the creator driving his segue off a cliff. That was also really uh, flawed. We should move on. You're lucky I worse. can't <laughs> it's on the other side of the room now. Um, okay, so uh, Overwatch has a capture the flag mode. I tried it out, uh, and it's a lot mm. of fun. Um, there are some bugs. They're working it out. They're actually forcing people in unranked uh, to play on a brand new map so they can get some data for it. Uh, they're grabbing mm. data around this game mode, probably to add it to the standard rotation, I would imagine. Um, I really like this, but the coolest part about Overwatch Capture the Flag is you've got timers constantly ticking down. In my first game, it was zero to zero, time ran out, and I was like, oh, cool. The screen uh, flashed sudden death. I was like, all right, this is awesome. I'm going to play a sudden death Capture the Flag round. It's going to be one capture, and that'll be it, right? Really boring, really basic. That's not what they did. One life. As soon as you die, you're done? No. Oh. No. This is is better. Um, They take the flags which are you know pretty far out in the map, and they put them mm-hmm. both in the main room next to each other. <laughs> oh, so they what? actually, yeah, they move the flag spawns like from these far locations where you have to traverse the entire map, and they move them uh-huh. into like this main big square room, like almost next to each other. So it's now you know two teams in one room just going at it, just, just wrecking shit, trying to get these flags pushed. It is suicide run after suicide run. Halo used to have Capture an entire the flag mode and Overwatch. for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love I that. Capture the flag and Overwatch seems really interesting because the different heroes have such a vast difference in movement speed. Oh, there Don't is... you drop the flag when you do, like... Like, you can't just, like, pick up that flag as Reinhardt and try to get back. Well, you you can. You can. That's actually, we had some guy do that in one of the matches. And he literally just put his shield up, and we all just tried to, you know, fire through the shield to keep him safe uh, and to keep people off his back while he returned. Oh, so you can can use your abilities and stuff with the flag. Some abilities. Not all abilities. Um, So, Tracer. I get get it. (laughs) Like a Tracer blink, you will drop the flag. And I did that because I didn't know. Um, Because that would be a little OP. Lucia, yeah. what about uh, Farah's flight stuff? I think she drops the flag. Uh, wow. most, oh, most, flying, movement, that seems little... most movement abilities will cause you to drop the flag because there are some okay. heroes that would that be makes sense. You know, Wait, utterly overpowered. Uh, overpowered. Like Tracer, yeah. if she could yeah. you know, dash or blink with the flag, that's game over. Um, I will say that Lucio, though, uh, because he's so fast and because he does ha- have the... Uh, you know, speed boost ability if you're not healing people. Um, mm-hmm. I've used him to carry flags, and that's what I did all one game, and it was, it was fucking can glorious. He, can, he wall, can he wall run with... Uh, you drop the flag. Scene? Damn, that's yeah. crazy. <sighs> yeah. See, so, I like, love those style of game yeah. modes. It's, it's yeah. so much Capture fun. Capture the flag's a lot of fun. It, mm-hmm. it's, changed, it's changed the way uh, I played Overwatch, because I, it's so much more fun. It actually reinvents a good part of the game. I was going to say, I bought Overwatch a while back and haven't really played it since. We need to get in we, on some Capture the Flag soon. We got to yeah, do we, it, we we get like it a at some point. Jesse yeah. just bought it. We could all CTF together. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, Fuzzy Gloves plays it, too. Yeah. He can join us. He just, he just said Capture the Flag was his favorite mode. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And uh, RS, obviously. Everybody. Yeah. We got yeah. a lot of Overwatch people yeah. in here. We just don't always play it. We Overwatch. should definitely do it. Uh, we should, I mean, last time, well, now that there's more people, we should do it as a postcast game. We haven't yeah. done that as a postcast game. But speaking of postcast games, our postcast game tonight, I know we didn't do a good job announcing it because we, I don't know, reasons. It's a Viscera Cleanup Detail. It should be a lot of fun. It's always really funny. So uh, get that thing downloaded and get ready. It's a real small download, too, if you don't have it installed. Yeah, already. yeah, yeah. But before we there's, get there's through, a lot of work um, to be done, so you better you better be there on time. Yeah, you guys, you guys <laughs> don't want to get over, fired. You guys see what Overwatch League is doing with the uh, <laughs> cheering? Yep. Oh my god, this <laughs> is <laughs> you get emotes for cheering if you cheer high enough. Oh, it it goes it goes even beyond that. Okay, so so you cheer, and ev- for every dollar you throw at the screen, they give you some emotes, right? Um, but it gets worse than that. They've now got a global counter of how many bits have been thrown at Overwatch oh, League, god. and when the counter hits, um, a, a skin will be unlocked um, for that for the game. 
like a, a special Overwatch League skin. So now it's compendium esque. <laughs> yeah. So now everybody has to throw money at the screen to Overwatch League uh, to watch this. And it, it, they ran into an issue on Twitch where if a team looked like they were totally going to win, people would tune out on you know game four out of four. They just drop off the stream. Uh, now mm-hmm. you get uh, points for watching the stream that link back to the game that you can use in a special Overwatch League store to buy, uh, you know, various skins and stuff. And I got to say, it worked for me right now, uh, you know, at home on my computer, my Twitch account, it's linked to my Blizzard account, and the Overwatch League is just sitting in a tab. Yeah, so they're going to give you that free shit because that means the sponsors now pay more because they know more eyes are staying. Yep, it, it, it goes beyond that, right? So Twitch takes you know a certain percentage of the money from bits. Right? From bits, not yeah. sponsors. Yeah, so... so it helps everyone, right? You give the Overwatch League some money because you're watching. Uh, there's also the thing where when you donate bits, you can say, oh, this is for this team. So now it becomes a competition on who gets the most bits on a leaderboard. <laughs> the whole wow. thing is a psychological fuck job. It is just like taking people's expectations and, and twisting them and giving them to give their hard-earned money to the Overwatch League. It's fucking brilliant. It's dirty, it's evil, and it's brilliant. I don't think it's dirty and evil because it's not like a blind loot box kind of thing. It's just, it's a really inventive way to get people to yeah. give you money. It's because it's what it is. They're just like, it's hey, exploitation. Give us cash. It's psychological exploitation. The whole thing. It just screams it. And it, you know what? It's gonna work. I'm not even against it. It's gonna work for some people. Yeah, I, yeah. Adam, how much money have you thrown at Overwatch League? Zero dollars so far. Same. Give or take. Gosh. Give or take. Give or take zero. Uh, nothing. Tom, two hundred thousand dollars. So a buck. Two hundred yeah. <laughs> amateur. <laughs> two hundred thousand dollars. Also, in some news, uh, a little throwback: uh, Spyro the Dragon trilogy is being redone, and I believe it's by the same people hey. who did the uh, Crash. Uh, I think nice. So. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who's making it, but hey, it's it's happening. But yeah, they're redoing Spyro. the trilogy. Um, I think this will work out a lot better than Crash, uh, mostly I because so, Crash yeah. was like a uh, technical a precision platformer, and Spyro is an adventure mm-hmm. platformer, which is gonna it's gonna translate right. so much better. Yeah, Very it, casual. I, it was a lot there's more There's a couple things. A there's a couple things I'd really like. I mean, I played all the Spyros. I'm a huge Spyro the Dragon fan, but there's a couple things I'd really like them to to fix in this one, and that would just be tighter movement when walking is one of the biggest things for me. And the big clunky hitbox, like Spyro's hitbox, <laughs> was fucking gigantic. Like you can hit, his, you can hit his baby toe on. Like you're trying to like fly to like a ledge that's just out of reach, and you can hit his baby toe on like that ledge, and you just plummet to your death. <laughs> so and the then one, like, I don't know thing, how much but, they're gonna do though, being a remaster, not a remake. Uh, well, I mean, they they changed Crash's hitbox. They in did that, in that remake, but that, that was a remake, not a remaster. A remaster is just aesthetics. No, no, you you can't you can't do that. So here's here's why. Um, games that were made for the PS One uh, and N sixty four around that era, most of the source code, uh, and this is all very company dependent, but most of that source code is gone or not usable in modern uh, game consoles and modern game engines. I mean, the PS One runs an entirely different type of process architecture than the PS Four does today. You can't reuse virtually anything like you could take concept art and use that but that's really the only thing you're starting from but then it's not a remaster no are I, we I, arguing I think, semantics here yes yes we are I, <laughs> because it's saying a remaster Stop and impl- it. remasters Stop imply it. one thing no this this is this is just a, a where shadow of colossus hole. is a remake it's it's a did you look at the did you look at the screenshots i didn't see the screenshots it's like a totally different model so like they're it looks like they're rebuilding this thing just like they did crash Adam, it looks did you just totally post, different did you just post about gex in the chat room yeah god fucking I did. damn it okay what's oh, the last time you croc? played gex i did you played call gex croc? this year i loaded up really gex you played 3. it recently yes i played gex 3 this fucking year it is, is the awful now? it is one of the worst platformers ever created i i loved it as a kid but it is so yeah. goddamn bad <laughs> it has <laughs> aged it's so tons. poorly it's like a jet jet moto age kind of poorly too. Yeah, I did, but I, I still love jet moto. Jet I, I, I just want to hear. Think they could make it work. I, I I like the idea of doing a crockery master because I want to hear like <laughs> ciao, Godzilla. 
I never played a second <laughs> like of that game. Of Jet Moto? No, well, of Jet Moto or Croc. Croc was I, my I, first, like, platform where I finished. Okay. It was so easy. It was yeah, so fun. Croc, Croc wasn't, like, awful. It just wasn't good compared to Spyro. No, Croc was awful. It was so <laughs> linear and so boring, like, when you go back and you play it again. But I was, like, a little kid at the time, so, like, I can finish it. So it was amazing. Jet, like, Moto, <laughs> Jet Moto was one of the first times I've ever been exposed to, um corporate branding in a video game or corporate sponsorships in a game because they had like the two racers with Mountain Dew outfits and the logo. <laughs> it's just like Mountain yeah. Dew, Jet Moto. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> These guys drink Mountain Dew. They've got to be cool. Hell yeah. I, I rocked the Mountain Dew. I absolutely rocked the Mountain Dew uh, team. <laughs> and speaking of teams, um, there's some new sponsorship coming into the uh, Rocket League um, professional scene. Yeah, this is awesome. Renault? Is it Renault? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Uh, I'm not a car guy. Renault? I, I don't know Reynolds and Reynolds? It's an F1, it's an F1 no. team, and they're sponsoring, and they're not not sponsoring team. a team. Yes, they are. <laughs> It'd be cool if they did. It's, this is pretty cool. This is really cool, especially because that means that they're going to have access to like a pro-level Team. Now, granted, okay, so granted that this happens in Overwatch, and we all know it, like in Overwatch League, there's this thing, right? But Overwatch is like a tier one esport. No. I'm t- what, are you, what are we going? What? It's confusing. called Ren- Renault. Renault? Oh, okay. Okay. Renault? Renault? Oh, Renault. Okay, we're good with it. We're being correct. Anyway, in the chat. <laughs> uh, um, Overwatch League is, or Overwatch is like a tier one esport. This is like a little bit lower on the tier list, like tier three, I think. Um, I think they rate those by how much uh, income it makes. Um, but uh, some, so a team like this picking up a Tier 3 eSport, that's pretty huge for eSports as a whole. That means, like, there's a lot of eyes on eSports. It's slowly becoming commonplace. It's just super weird because, like, I remember, you know, only a few years ago, everyone's like, what is eSports? And it's still, like, still relatively like that, right? But it's becoming more and more of a common term, common common knowledge. It's weird. What do you What do you guys think about that? I mean, I I don't know if this is just like um, a hello fellow kids cash in. I, I I'm not I'm not into car racing at all. I'm totally okay, well, outside of the of the social group here. Well, there's something super interesting about F1. F1 is having a hard time bringing in. Uh, viewers there's a lot less people like uh, they actually redid some of the rules for f1 recently to bring to make the cars faster to bring in more uh more spectators they're even slowly going away from uh like a gas powered to more of uh, electric powered racing for f1 there's they're doing everything they can to try to uh bring in more viewers so it's really really weird to see F1 teams picking up esports teams because I wonder if it's a, a desperation move to try to say, okay, well, you know, Renault, we're an F1 team. Let's see if we can get into some of these bigger, these sports that are that are slowly becoming bigger, right? I, I, I don't know. Say, I but think it's, it's a really just interesting. To, to grab, you know, different sets of eyeballs uh, to this team and their sport because I've never heard of Renault. I have no idea who these people are. I don't watch racing in any form. Um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I I just heard about this company. I clicked on their link. I read about them. Um, You know, Eric's got the website up right now. I've never seen this at all. They're a European car manufacturer. Yeah, I I have no idea who they are. And now I do because they've got a Rocket League team. And that could be the ploy, right? It could just be marketing money. And that's okay. That's uh, all any of this is for these kind of companies. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's a bad thing. I just I don't I don't think that their heart's in it. That's not necessarily be, a bad thing. I just I don't think they're in it for Rocket League. I think they're in it. Well, for they marketing. didn't just pick up Rocket League. I mean, they have a couple other esports. They they took on a, I think is it a Gran Turismo team or something like that. They took a couple of racing like racing game teams too. So they they uh, they have like now they have like this esports. Like, would you call it a subsidiary? That sounds really weird because that's not right. But anyway, something like that, right? They have a subgroup of their main team. And all of these people are training at that facility, the Renault facility, um, and that they have for their F1 drivers. So they have like all of these uh, people that help manage teams, help 
Uh, you know, like there's things like, you know, sports psychologists and those things are commonplace in sports. So mm-hmm. they'd have access to this level of training and management. It's it's kind of insane, especially Pretty considering cool. <laughs> especially considering the team that they actually picked up was probably the most poorly ran team before ran by <laughs> a kid that with a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and they got screwed a lot and didn't get paid a lot. And a lot of bad things happened to them throughout the whole process. And now they got picked up by, you know, a really good team. And then also backed by an F1 team. <laughs> it's, it's a total flip of that coin. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's it's interesting. We'll have to see what what comes of this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Good night. Um, anyway, carry on. Th- <laughs> yeah, THQ right. Nordic. Him, right? Yeah. So so THQ died, uh, and then THQ Nordic was kind of spun off into their own thing. They lost all their licenses to Deep Silver. Uh, well, THQ Nordic just bought Deep Silver, uh, meaning that Saints Row is now back at THQ. So yeah. So hmm. yeah, uh, Saints Row. Um, I don't have any faith in the franchise anymore, really. But um, I I yeah. do only after hearing their excuse for what Saints Row Four was. Um, so it was originally just a twenty dollar expansion pack DLC to Saints Row Three, which is why it was literally the same game. Um, right. The issue is that when THQ was going under, they had stockholder pressure to launch a new game. So they took their twenty dollar DLC and they call it Saints Row Four. That is yeah. exactly what happened, and it's shitty for everyone because I bought that game at sixty dollars. So did that I. Too. Sucks. Yeah, and I bounced off it pretty quick. It is um, probably the quickest. I played the whole I, thing. I I one hundred percent of it. It's one I of the few games same. I did. It was, it was really good. I liked it. It was really fun. It wasn't like a sixty dollar good, but I really enjoyed it and had a yeah. great time. I've gone through it a couple times. I really enjoyed. It. Now three, three was infinitely better. I say I had more oh, fun yeah. with three. Easy. Yeah, three. three was incredible. Yeah. Three was easily <laughs> better. I mean, the only yeah, three was like super underrated at the time for me too, because everyone's like Grand Theft Auto. I'm like, hold on, hold on. You don't understand what else is out. That <laughs> you know, it, it was such it was such a shift because GTA Four came out and it like Vice City was goofy right you headshotted people right. and their heads literally popped off and blood spurred out like it was it was just <laughs> goofy and violent and fun and GTA Four mm-hmm. came out and it was super serious and depressing and the story was so like fucking hard man and yeah even the camera was like was like b- like blown out kind of it, it yeah. didn't seem like it was like it like the co- there was like lack of color. Not, not to say dreary. that GTA yeah. 4 was yeah. humorless. I mean, it, it was a funny it was game good. in certain parts, but it, it was uh, very serious in tone compared to the other is, GTAs. Yeah. Is drab the right term for that? I think it yeah. is. Yeah, and yeah. You know, Saints Row the Third comes along, and you're beating people to death with a giant purple dildo with your gang symbol on it, and, and it like, was amazing. The shark minigun yeah. and stuff the like that. The shark minigun, the yeah. fucking dubstep gun, man. It was great. Saints Row the Third was just funny. <laughs> the final mission with Bonnie Tyler blaring in the background, you can't can't beat it well even just the intro music like the very first thing that you do when you parachute into the uh like the the rooftop of that thing yes. one yes. of the first mi- and it plays mm-hmm. that song and you're just like dude this is gonna be amazing you're yeah. in for a ride like as soon as yeah. you start that game up you know you're yep. in for a ride it was really good they it was went over- changing your voice style I changed. There's an option for a zombie voice. Oh, really? So the entire game, your yep. character is just going <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> with subtitles that say words, and everybody's just talking to him like nothing's out of the ordinary. God, it's really good. So it may have just been me, again. but three felt over the top in a very enjoyable way. Yeah. Four yeah. felt over the top in a very campy way to me. Yeah, I would agree. Well, with that's that. what it was. I mean, that, it, it really it was I, just I making I'm fun mentioning. of like Mass Effect and being a superhero. There was a bunch of superhero games out at the time, so yeah. like the, it, it was it made perfect sense as a DLC. The price point was not there. I wouldn't suggest anyone get it if they haven't played the previous. So, like, uh, if if you can get Saints Row the Four for like a couple bucks on a Steam sale, probably worth it. Totally um, worth it. But, you know, it's like, fun. if you can get Saints Row the Third for even, you know, five bucks, ten bucks, pick it up. It's a good romp, especially co-op. Like, if you can buy a couple copies and give one to your buddy, do it. Totally oh, yeah, it's co-op. great co-op. Super good. You could play the whole story co-op. Come yeah. on. Like, there's not a lot of games at that time that you could even do that. The so whole good. story, the whole campaign, come on. Yeah. Right. Um, Move on from that. We have Steam playing 
you know, Guard Dog once again. They're yep. doing this more. They opened up the platform and they're doing this more and more, which is kind of weird, but awesome. Uh, Maltese uh, publisher has been banned from Steam. Incel Games. Totally banned. Um, apparently, the CEO uh, wrote, hey, I can't force you to write a review or tell you what to write, but I shouldn't have to. Um, if you neglect this, it will ultimately cost jobs. So buy the game and I'll reimburse you uh, and write a review. If you don't want to do it, you need to come to me and explain why you don't want to do this. Uh, so he was basically bullying his employees into leaving Steam reviews. <laughs> Somebody leaked this. Uh, word got back around to Valve, and Valve said, yeah, you can't really do that because you're fucking assholes. Uh, yeah, you know what's going to cost jobs? You not being on fucking Steam anymore. Get the fuck out of my shop. So uh, they're banned. In short, Steam's trying to make sure the review process doesn't get effed. Yeah. They've been tweaking this for the last few years um, with the, yes, I got this game for free indication on games and stuff like that. So... I like to see them keep doing this because the reviews are, they're useful. They're nice to know. Yeah. And just because it's free doesn't mean it's not valuable, but it's nice to know. Yeah. Um, Steam is also adding discount and price filters to your wish list. So during a Steam sale, especially if you've got a giant wish list like I do, uh, you want to know, hey, what the fuck is on sale? Because I'm not going to go through, you know, four pages of this stuff. And you can now sort mm -hmm. those. So nice. Thanks. Very nice. So I don't know. Nice quality of life improvement. Yeah, I got to trim my wish list, by the way. It yeah. is getting way too long with games that I don't want anymore. Actually, I found that like three That's games funny. I'm following aren't even on Steam anymore. What? Really? See, I'm not a I'm not a big wish lister. I think I've got 10 or 15 games, maybe. I usually update my wish list pretty regularly. Uh, there's a bunch of them that I'm waiting for, like release dates for. Yeah, um, I do. So that. like I, That's, I, that's I, basically what I use it for. And like, there's a couple games that I'm like, ah, that's really expensive, but I still really want that game. And sometimes I just get in a game drought where I'm like, oh, eh, I don't even know what I want to play right now. Um, yeah. So it's always good to go to that. I mean, right now I'm waiting for Children of Morta. And that's going to be amazing. I, th I thought you were going to say Children of Mordor for a second. I'm yeah. Like, what? <laughs> like, Children of Mordor? Are you saying that we No, there's a, <laughs> and, and Eater. Those, those two are the two that I'm waiting to finally release. And it doesn't, like, it's just like indie developer kind of stuff. So I'm like, hey, whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> so I just have it pending. Oh, I actually only have six games on my Steam wish list. Oh, nice. we should, I have 30 or 40. We'll buy them all for yeah, you, and then you get all angry. The most important <laughs> one, the most important one, for me is the last light or the last night which isn't yeah. out yet but god that looks so good i'm looking yeah. forward to uh no man's sky oh yeah nice <laughs> yeah. i might actually play that like in a little bit it's a nice chill game i enjoy it um other news uh the esa is um fighting i guess you can say this idea that some old um, Old games, their servers are down. They've been down. Mm. Um, there's requests from some archiving firms saying, hey, let us create a server for this game so that we can actually do stuff for this game. Make act, Not open it up for people to play, but for archiving. Yeah, for preservation. Um, so there are certain um, copyright exceptions that the Library of Congress can make. And uh, they have said in the past when it comes to video games, hey, you know, if a company no longer exists, those games are now up for archiving and preservation. And you can infringe copyright. It is allowed through this very tiny exception to infringe copyright to make sure that these games are preserved for future generations. It's really cool because, um, you know, like today, uh, we could watch a movie from the 1940s. We could, you know, pop it in. We could throw it on YouTube. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways for us to consume old content, old music, old yeah. books, really easy mm -hmm. to consume. But let's say, let's say in, you know, 50 years, you wanted to play EverQuest. Well, today, there's no good way to do that, right? The, the servers don't exist. The, uh, just like Adam Salbany, who's trying to play uh, Max Payne 2, right? The, the code might be incompatible with modern operating systems. There's, there's a lot of work that goes into preserving the state of these games and making them you know, functional for future mm -hmm. generations, and that's what this group is trying to do. Uh, well, the Electronic Software Association, or Entertainment Software Association, Yes, Entertainment Software Association um, doesn't want this to happen. They're concerned about piracy. They're concerned about uh, the sanctity of you know the DMCA. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see. Personally, I side on the uh, side of archival. I think these groups have done great things in the past. They're going to continue to do great things. And by standing in the way of this, you're standing in the way of future generations who might want to experience World of Warcraft if it ever dies, which it won't. It I, is, isn't there a website somewhere? Um, now, th- I'm like, you got me kind of looking because I, re- I remembered it was posted. It may have been posted to Discord recently where um, you can... Uh, you can play like a whole bunch of old, like not Nintendo games, but that kind of time period. Org. That's the one. Mm, okay, yep. so they have a bunch of them that you can play for free. That would be awesome if you could have some of those things, especially like when we're all like yeah. ni- we're all ninety and we're all living in like a land <laughs> environment. You guys like, want to play Borderlands? Like <laughs> I haven't yeah. played that game since blah blah blah. I I <laughs> yeah, can't exactly. I can't say I don't understand where the companies are coming from yeah i I, get it i think that the archiving needs to happen but i agree that there needs to be some safeguards to make sure that hey these servers this information we're doing on this isn't exposed until the game rights are open domain yeah i mean that's fine because right now nothing nothing is though and nothing ever will be Nothing will ever be public domain again. Here's, here's why. Here's why that works. So it used to be that copyright law expired in like 14 years. Well, thanks to Disney, that kept getting expanded. Not to get into a giant thing. Copyright law today means that it's the life of the author plus 90 years. But the author isn't classified as the author or the people that made the game. The author is classified as the person who owns the rights. So let's say Disney Mm. buys Nintendo tomorrow. It's now the life of the Disney Corporation and anyone who might purchase those rights or the wholly owned subsidiary that owns the rights from the Disney Corporation, the lifetime of that uh, corporate entity plus 90 years. So Mm. if, let's say, Blizzard dies... And, you know, Activision owns World of Warcraft. They sell the rights to a brand new company that exists that dies, that gets bought by another company. That chain continues and it will never die because people don't let rights expire. They are sold off as part of bundles. And in that case, the archiving company archives it as is what they're doing, but doesn't expose it. Right. right. It, which which, which defeats, I'm fine with. It defeats the purpose, though, right? If no one can experience mm. those games, it, right, if they're not preserved for the use of future generations, why are we storing it? You're just being a digital pack rat at that point. That It offers no utility. True. Right? Yes, but at the and same let's, time, let's you're say, saying it's give, saying, you, you, you know you what? You don't have to put this online, right? This doesn't have to be a downloadable thing, right? Um, so yeah, these, They charge these people, $10 a Head to get into the museum to play these games that are technically still owned by other companies Indeed. that they're charging people to play. Yeah, so what's what's the damage there? They're charging people to play games that other companies own. But they're not selling, they're not making, and they're non-functional, so where's the monetary damage? Because yeah. that, is, that, they, that, that gave, is a model gave, that company could explore in the future. I, I don't buy because it. Because you don't think they will doesn't mean they can't. Yeah, that's, that's true. I just I don't buy it. I, I'm just saying, I understand. I, I love the archiving companies, but I understand the grounds of the companies that own the stuff. Yeah. I understand that. I, the the I archiving understand. company is making money on content. Would, would it be own. different if the museum was free? I think so. I think I would feel a lot differently. What, what if it was $10 to pay the janitorial staff? Or what if they had a donation bucket outside? Would that be different? I would want a lot of visibility. I'd be good with the donation bucket. I would want a lot of visibility, but yes. Okay. Because I I think there is a weird feeling of making money off someone else's content. Yeah. And not being the publisher because they make a racket off of doing that. But yeah. Um, As far as content that no one should consume uh, today or ever, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog (laughs) is getting a movie in November 2019. So don't see that. No, thank you. Was it? Is it? Is it a live action movie or an animated movie? Uh, yeah, animated either movie. way, it should star Danny DeVito. I thought I, I, I thought wanted to say something that would be live action. What, like with an actual, like it would be God, a CS. I hope funny. not. That, that would be, be so funny. Time. Uh, I'm trying to think. I was about to say, <laughs> it like, it would be, be a the fucking Pikachu movie that's about to come out is live action. Yeah, but here's the thing there's a lot of humans in that. You only have Dr. Robotnik in Sonic. There's so a he, live action Pikachu movie uh, coming The out? most we know what about, about the live action okay, Mario Brothers, of here, course. Here, here it is. Uh, I'm quoting this Polygon article 
Um, the most we know about Sonic's Hollywood debut is that the film will use both live action footage and computer generated animation, which sounds a lot like the upcoming Detective Pikachu movie, uh, which is set and to Space date, Jam and Space Jam, uh, which is set to predate Sonic's feature by several months. It will be out May <laughs> 10th, sorry, 2019. Same bolt. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, if Usain uh, Bolt painted blue, bolt. I would oh totally watch the fuck out of that if movie. If it had Usain Bolt and Bill Murray, I'd be all right with it. Okay. And uh, I, what's his name? That Newman, Randy Newman. I would watch no, the fuck out of it. The, plays the character Newman. Oh, I don't Jesus. know what the actor's name yeah, is. Yeah, that guy. That guy. Yeah, I, <laughs> he would be a great Robotnik. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I think this is dreadful. I think this is fucking awful. It, and so I well, think the, 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 the animation video camp, that's doing if they just, it is good though. If they owned it and made pure fucking camp, I would love it. I would. Well, watch I mean, this. isn't isn't this done by the same people um, that did like? Uh, what, like uh, the Minions movie and stuff, uh, Illumination. That that is the Mario movie. I don't oh, know who's the doing Mario this one. Never mind, never yeah. Mind. Oh, then hopefully someone terrible is doing this. <laughs> Did you guys? Darcel said. Dark Souls said the rock painted red would be Knuckles. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> See, I'm like where we're going with this. Who's this someone really wiry good. and hype? Chris Rock as Fox. Oh, as Tails. 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 No, no, you gotta have like Steve Buscemi. Chris Tucker would be better. I agree. Chris Tucker would be way, way better. Oh, I didn't mean Chris Rock. <laughs> He'd be like Sonic. Anyway. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin so Hart. Good. Oh, there we Kevin go. Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah, I, still, I, yeah, I, I think I'd be making good tales. <laughs> I'm still feeling Chris Tucker. Now They're like, you said it. I'm, I'm committed to this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys then, ever watch the animated show? Yes. Okay, wait, wait, which one? Because there were like, okay, there's been like five, but back when we were kids. Like 94, 95 era, I Yeah, think. yeah, back when we were kids, there were two. Hmm. There was the one on ABC, which had nothing to do with the games, but was kind of, it loosely inspired the comics, which was actually really good. It was like a hardcore action show, which was rad. And then there was The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was fucking dog shit. It was like a standard Saturday morning cartoon, but nowhere near as good. I don't know which one I watched. Hmm. I know it had Sonic and Tails. Did it have the like the chicken robot? I don't remember. It had a pink girl. Chicken robot. Okay. Uh -oh. Then uh, that's I all I remember. One. I don't know which one you watched. That. I you know, for the longest time, I thought Tails was a girl. Yeah, a lot of people have thought that. Mm. That was like, uh, and then I like they did. I think I watched one some random animated thing where he talked, and I was like, oh. <laughs> it's like, that, that, that's oh. not a girl. What? It wasn't um, like a. Yeah, anyway. I was saying, <laughs> we're yeah. that check. So, speaking of content that people fucking love and I never got into, uh, Burnout Paradise is coming the fuck back. March 16th, yes. $40 4K remaster. March 16th. Oh, yeah. okay, it's crazy how everybody much fucking loves Burnout it. Paradise, and I stopped on Burnout 3. I don't think I ever played Burnout Paradise. I mean, I played a lot I, of the Burnout series. I've never played Burnout Paradise, but I own it on Steam. Do I? I might too. I might too. <laughs> burnout I games were, the Burnout games were a lot of fun, though. Oh, dude. There is, Jesus. I love the Burnout games. The thing that pissed me off is that you couldn't use real cars because real car companies didn't want to have yeah. cars you know, crash into yeah, other whatever. people on purpose. Um, That's you know what's funny is there's so many there's so many games that took little bits of burnout like there's a there's a thing in GTA where you just try not to hit the cars you just like weave back and forth to build up uh you know whatever whatever meter is going on there's uh the whole thing in uh, Saints Row Four where you would just like throw yourself at cars and blow shit up oh, like, yes <laughs> yes the there's uh, it's really too. cool that like the those little and then there's that whole game flat out that was that's an entire genre that tried to copy burnout yeah <laughs> so it's it's crazy how much of an impact it had. I'm surprised it's been this long since they've done another one. I still remember my first time ever doing a crash mode. Well, the the reason that burnout kind of disappeared is because EA bought Criterion, and then it just burned out. <laughs> like a lot of the. That's the show. See you guys. It's been real. <laughs> um, <laughs> Warcraft three just War yeah, Warcraft three just got a major patch. Well, okay. I mean, let's be honest. It's actually the most recent installment in the franchise. There are apparently rumors <laughs> that it Blizzard, is. Blizzard is getting ready to yeah, turn it into an eSports, um, and they might try to remaster it in the future. Like, give it the whole StarCraft treatment, which would be rad. I would be more excited about a Warcraft 4 than I was about StarCraft 2, because I was more, always more of a Warcraft guy. I agree. I agree. Um, 
In other big news, I'm going to try not to get too ranty on this. Uh, apparently, politicians are blaming video games again for school shootings. Um, in particular, they've named uh, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and the Sega CD Night Trap. Oh, I'm sorry. I've pulled up an article from the 1990s here. Oh, it looks like this <laughs> shit's happening again, uh, including a Kentucky governor, a president of a shithole country, um, who has said uh, <laughs> vi- violent video games are shaping young people's thoughts. So go out and vote uh, for people who like video and, games. And movies, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 If, only, if only there was like a rating system or something that we yeah, could they did put say on them. That. I, I know. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, we, we try not to talk about politics on this show, but apparently this shit's happening again. So they can all go fuck themselves. Uh, all the health and science studies on violent video games show that if they do cause aggression, it's only after playing several rounds of League of Legends or Dota 2. Uh, and no other <laughs> game causes aggression or murder. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, they did find Something short-term like aggression, but not like psychological impact aggression. Well, psychological impact is found for Dota 2, particularly. <laughs> murder, just just rampant psychopath murder after Dota 2. Well, yeah, that that that's Dota it, 2. It just makes sense. In a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. Every, we knew that. Yeah. Gamers knew that. Well, actually, it's also going to any ranked mode when you're not with your friends. Yeah, that's true. any game. Yeah. Solo ranked Rocket League. Solo standard? Yeah. Yeah, fuck that noise. Yeah. Not that bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. that's, that's all the news. Yeah, I was going to say, so that's really pretty much all we have. Um, if you guys have Viscera Cleanup Duty, uh, that's going to be rocking here shortly, right after the cast. Heck yeah. Um, other than that, you know, if you're over here watching us, you get our YouTube. Um, we have some content, nothing, a whole lot of new, but yeah, we got our content. Um, if you're over there watching that, hey, you should come over to our Twitch uh twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector live saturday night 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific saturday, standard saturday. time um if you like podcasts get us on itunes uh google play Stitcher, you can go to pocket cast all the fun Stitcher. stuff we're modern oh, we're all everywhere um ah. or you can go to our 72 pin connector.com if you like to get rss feeds manually like a fucking neanderthal hey um, yeah, we're also starting uh, going to be starting up some new uh, series relatively soon. So keep keep your keep tuned for that. Yes, and yeah. as well, tweet at us, email us. If you have 72. shit to say or things you want us to talk about, you can you know yell at us in any fashion, including in our Discord. Links on yeah. seven two pin connector dot com. And Join you can Discord. also tweet at us at, at seventy two PC podcast if you prefer that. Just. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, who's the prettiest. If, if you want to see more Dark Souls content, you got to let us know, all because right. otherwise we're closing And with that, um, <laughs> I think it's all we really got for you all this week. Um, everyone, thanks for sticking around with us. Uh, long cast. Next week, be back to more of our normal patterns and habits. Yeah. So, with that, And more everyone, Dark Souls. More Dark Souls. No. Anyway, with that... I think that's all we got for you this week, so until next week, game on. See you, everyone. See ya. Bye.